he'll score or something no oh <laughs> let's welcome our guest and i'm going to do it in the words of a fan phil jackson whose birthday is today and he said He's a retired fireman from Wolverhampton who drives from Portsmouth to every single Wolves game. He said, my season ticket's in the Steve Ball stand. I've got a framed Steve Ball shirt on my wall. He is God to Wolves supporters. Ladies and gentlemen, 306 goals for Wolves, 18 hat-tricks and 13 caps for England as the bells ring here in France. Please welcome the legend that is Steve Ball. Hey, you doing, Steve? You okay? Was that a big enough build-up for you, love? <laughs> not too bad, not too bad, not too bad at all. You look as though you're almost celebrity getting the air today. Yeah, well, it's um, it's actually a bit dull here today. I think you you guys are having a lovely summer, an early summer in England, aren't you? Yeah, last two days are absolutely beautiful. I've been doing that horrible job by painting the fence. Uh, oh. So I burnt me back a bit yesterday, but today's a bit uh, overcast. But you can't grumble. You, have you been doing homeschooling with Gracie? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was hoping that Kirsty was doing it anyway, of the two of you. Yes, she is, yes. She's more technological, like, like you said before, I'm not techno, I'm just press the button, say hello, say bye-bye, and that's it, done. Stick a ball on your foot and you're good. Now, let me have a look. Where, where are you? Are you inside or outside? You're inside. Me, I'm, in, I'm inside. I'm on the landing where, yeah, I'm in, there you look, I'm in, there you go, I'm on the landing. Nothing much here. So how, how's um how has lockdown been for you? Um, have you been have you taken to it quite well? I know you've been doing a bit of charity work, trying to call a bit of money in, get some PPE sorted and stuff. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's hard work for everybody, not just myself. You know what I mean? But uh, if you can get out and do your daily exercise an hour a day, it breaks the boredom up. Uh, otherwise, you know what I mean? You look at the oven. If you consider the food in the oven cooking, you don't need cleaning. <laughs> it needs cutting. Just do all the jobs you've been nagged at over the last 12 months. You'll get them done in the next two months. I don't think that you've ever been nagged, Mr. Yeah. Ball. Yeah, right. There's, there's thousands of Albion fans up the road that nag me every day. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what, there's quite a lot of Albion fans watching today that are giving it the old uh, boing boing on here. Yeah, they will do. They'll give you some stick today, so it's a bit techno no, just We're strong enough and uh, thick skin, aren't we? Absolutely. Today and every day. Just need to check in with my lodger, Steve, the Geordie lodger. Are you understanding volleys are all good? Do you need subtitles or are you I, fine? I think I need subtitles for once. I don't understand what the hell you're talking about. Right. It's, it's a little bit this, like the partnership between you and Andy Much, Steve. I know he's there, but I can't understand the bloody word that he's saying to me. <laughs> he is. He's absolutely unbelievable, Much. He, uh, he was the unsung hero, if you know what I mean. Uh, but uh, if you watch the videos or, or YouTube or whatever, the goals that me and Muchy set up, we put them on a plate to each other. We uh, we helped each other, if you know what I mean. So uh, he was a top, top bloke. As you say, he's a scouser. Uh, I'm from Tipton. It's like me and the Geordie Lodger talking now. You wouldn't understand who said to each other, you know what I mean? <laughs> what did you say, Bully? <laughs> 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 you seem to have these great relationships and these great sort of partnerships with very broad speaking uh, individuals like Andy Much, but also Gaza. I mean, you're still great friends with Gaza, aren't you? Gaza's a very good friend of mine. Uh, he's been through some very, very troubled times. Uh, not, on, not on his own back, it's other people around him, but uh, he's coming through it now, I think. Uh, he's had something done to his tummy to stop him drinking certain stuff. Uh, he's coming around a lot more better. Uh, but if you can understand me, Geordie Lodger, you can understand Gaza, trust me, because he's worse than me, Gaza is. He <laughs> <laughs> sounds like Gaza, this one. He's, he's, um, he actually, I have to say, he, he loves both of you very much and he's very excited about today. I know he's got his own questions for you, but just going back to you talking there about Andy Much, was, was that your favourite um, partnership in football, would you say? I think so. I think we complemented each other. Uh, like I say, we knew on the field where we was, whether I was going near post, he was going back post, I was going vice versa. We had a good relationship on the field and off the field because uh, as a squad uh, from 86 to about 92, we all stuck together, as you know. Uh, we played football together, we went out together, we did this together. We did everything together as a unit and, uh, and that's the way Graham Turner got us working. Uh, but me and Muchy, he's still one of my best mates now and he's absolutely top draw. Yeah, he's a, he's a good player. But once he starts talking, you can't stop him, can you? <laughs> Yes, you can't. I do apologise to all the scouts that are watching. You can talk for fun, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to apologise now because I'm probably going to slip back into my Wolverhampton mother tongue because I'm talking to you. But um, 
Bully, you know, you're known, obviously, for the loyalty for the club, for the goal-scoring record, for playing for England. But the overwhelming thing for anybody that's watched you play, I think, is this obsession that you had for scoring goals. And me and the lodger were watching, you know, your top goals back last night. And the one thing that, that sort of stands out, really, is, is the way that you scored your goals. You don't really see that play anymore. It was kind of like, get the ball, control it, turn, turn your last defender, don't run into the space, just blast the ball in. It, you never took that space that was there. What was the reasoning behind that? That's good tactic. I'm glad you're not a manager because you just turn and blast the ball. <laughs> I'm glad you weren't the manager. Uh, <laughs> no, he, 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 it's just one of them natural instincts. It was one of them things and... Uh, I think a lot of players said when I played, I was a selfish player, uh, but I wouldn't take that selfishness out of me because that's what made me score the goals. Uh, but it was my job. My job was that 18-yard box. If that ball's in that box, I ain't going to pass the ball, whatever. I ain't going to dink it one, two, like Jota and Jimenez at the moment. I ain't going to do that. I'm going to turn and hit it. And uh, that's the way I played. And you saw most of the goals. You know what I mean? Fly, turn, hit it, turn, head that turn, hit it. So it was yeah. just you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, bullet bullet headers as well. Bullies, bullet headers uh, were, were absolutely awesome. But you, you, I noticed as well. You, you, you've signed with your left hand, but you prefer your right foot. It's a bit yeah, strange. It's weird. Oh, that's me coming from Tipton. I think it's. Uh... <laughs> if anybody don't know where Tipton is, it's miles away over there in a funny world. Um, <laughs> it's like Geordie's Geordie Lodgers Land. The other beds up there. Um, <laughs> but you. Yeah, that's all I do. All I do is sign my, 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 my left hand and then the rest is all, I throw darts, I play pool, I kick him over. That's all I do is sign. It's weird. It's weird. Oh, right. Okay. So every, everything else is, well, it's obviously the way that your brain works. Uh, I mean, it work, worked out well for your footballing career. But you, you, I mean, you did obviously score with your left foot as well. I think over 100 goals, wasn't it? I did. I did. I, I couldn't believe it, to be fair, because uh, if you take this left leg away from me, I'll fall over. It's just one of them. <laughs> And uh, the, the managers uh, had one of your tactical phrases to get me using that. He says, just turn and swing it. <laughs> and I swung my left leg and I scored over 100 goals. You know that shielding that you used to do? Was, was that in any way tactical or was it just pure instinct? Was the shielding, a shielding of the ball or the man what, on the pitch? It was just natural saying, that's mine. I'm having that. That's my ball and you're, you're not getting it. That's it. Full stop. Why don't do you, you know the, your style of play? We just don't see it now. Does it not fit into modern football, or is it just unique to you? I think I, th I don't think it is because they don't play with two up front now. I think if they play one up front, you've got to run your legs off. Uh, and uh, with me and Muchi, we did the doggy work uh, together. He went front, I went back. Now Jimenez, Jota, and uh, and Troyora are flying like pigeons. They're flying all over the place, left, right, centre. There's no need for two centre forwards now unless you play with a four-four-two. Hmm. Let's go back then to the dark days where you're at West Bromwich Albion. I can't believe I even said it out loud. Um, oh. <laughs> not, not for long, but you, you were sort of getting on all right there, weren't you? And then one, one day out of the blue, you found out that you were off down the road. Just, just tell us the story about you and Tomo and, and your trip to Wolves and, and how, what the state of the club was at the time. It was, uh, uh, it was absolute scandal. Um, I can't get my hat on, to be fair, because... Uh, uh, Nobby Stalls and Johnny Jaws actually took me to the Albion uh, when I was 19, took me off my work and uh, I've got in the side, I've scored three goals in five games. Nobby Stalls left and Johnny Jaws left and then Ron Saunders came in and uh, he obviously didn't like my face or I didn't fit in and uh, I was on the training field one day and uh, the big hook came out the window and it was behind Tomo's neck and I went, where are you going? I said, you're off, you are, you're going. He went, I'm going nowhere. Five minutes later, the hook came out my neck you got to go and see the gaffer. So I walked upstairs and Tom, I was lying on the floor laughing his head off saying, you're coming with me, you are. I went, I ain't going nowhere, Tom. I went in and Ron Saunders looked at me and says, you enjoying it, mate? I went, yeah, absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. He says, you're doing well. I says, uh, I says uh, somebody's coming for you. And I went, what do you mean? Somebody's coming for me. He says, oh, Wolves are coming for you. I said, but I've just scored three and five goals. He went, but you haven't got a first touch for this division. And I was like deflated. I went, what do I do? He went, go down the road. So I picked Tom up off the floor, go went down to the, this big orange Cortina, what we had at the time, you know, these big cars. Jumped in this car, and me and Tom went down the M5, A449, 
And Tom all got big curly hair and a moustache. And oh, I yeah. one, got one of these jackets from Bilston Market, like Czech jackets. We looked like Starsky and Hutch going down the M5. And uh, we, we parled outside Molyneux. Well, he weren't a Molyneux. He, he was absolutely shocking. Absolutely really terrible. And uh, we walked in the doors and uh, there was water on the floor, tiles coming off the roof, cockroaches running everywhere. And uh, there was only two people working there at the time. And uh, I said, you see Graham? Yeah. So we walked uh, walked outside the, the, the door the, where the gaffer's door was. And, uh, and uh, he says, who's coming in first? And Tomo went past me first, went in. Two minutes, he come out, he went, I've signed, I've signed. I went, you're having me on. You've only been there two minutes, he wants to play football. On a case, so I walked in and, uh, and uh, he, he showed me this this um, this bronze uh, sculpture of the ground it's going to be. It ain't like that now, after 30 years. He said to me, he sold it to me, Graham sold it to me. I went, go on, then I'll sign, sign. And that was it, bang, we, we never looked back since. But the place itself, you, you know itself, it had one stand, which is a mile away. The great big South Bank, which is absolutely unbelievable concrete, and the other two were shut down. But uh, me and Tom, Al, we just went there, wanted to play football, and that was it. And we, we never looked back since. And the facilities, like you were saying, within the stadium were were just appalling, weren't they? Really, what was it like then when when you were training? Where were you training? Oh, we was training everywhere. We was training on the race course, Dunstable Race Course in the middle, Penderford Hockey Club, uh, on the car park uh, back of Asda. You know that one where we. We used to, you know, you didn't know we trying on the car park. Um, yeah. This is good. This because on a Friday, Friday morning, uh, we had a ritual. Uh, you don't want me to keep talking, do you? No, that's why you're here. Look, carry on. Okay. okay. <laughs> if we had a car park, my where that's the where that's doing now, just beyond the stand tullies, we had a car park there where we trained on their ritual every Friday morning. On a Friday morning, now you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't uh, believe it, but. Uh, we always to go out to the car park and there's cars parked on the car park. And we were shunting these cars down the, down the car park so we can make a path with the goals, the two goals at the end and the side, and kick the ball. And the only injuries we had, you wouldn't believe, was grazes off our hands where we fell and stopped ourselves hurting ourselves. But the best part of this, you wouldn't believe, that uh, we was moving these cars, people were coming back half an hour later going, I'm sure I parked my car there. <laughs> And it got but, dints in from the ball. But we, 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 that was a ritual, and we had a yellow jersey where the worst player after the training session we used to go in the in the changing room on the blackboard. Who was the worst player? Oh, um, the gaffer, our oh, uh, Gary Bellamy, or oh, Floyd Street. And we used to one day we give it the gaffer, we give it the gaffer, honestly. And he chucked his dummy out. He went like, I'm not, I'm not having this on a Friday. I'm not wearing that jumper. And he he, he made it as a laugh, but he didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do. Do you think in in situations like that where it's where it's pretty down and out really, and it was looking fairly bleak in terms of money being pumped in, that the the team spirit and the bonding between you all is is the most important thing. It is to be fair, and I think uh, that's what Nuno has got at the moment. You know what I mean? Uh, they, they come from all over the world to play for Wolves and Mark, but they get on well together, and that's all down to the manager. It's all down to Graham Turner who kept us together, and all he said to us uh, that. Uh, don't bring no trouble back to this club. You can do what you want, just don't bring no trouble. And we never, all in the years who was there, we never brought no trouble back. We did get away with murder. I, I, I can say we did get away with murder. We did certain things and whatever. But uh, but uh, he's, he's, he, he, did, he did well for us. Are you talking about the kind of things that you were doing in your social life, you lot? The, the going out and the partying? That's it. Yes, yes. I know you, sh you shouldn't do certain things after a Wednesday night and whatever and stuff like this. But uh, I used to go and have a drink with my dad on a Thursday night and he's local, have six points, get up and train Friday and play Saturdays. It was just a ritual, but you could get away with it then. But nowadays, uh, they're like robots. They're like robots now. They're finely tuned. It's like a good motorbike. You know what I mean? It's like they got oil, everything going through tune. They're there, bang now. Finely honed. Um it is an extraordinary story, yours, really, from uh, taking the club really up up through the the divisions. And obviously, you know, you'd retired by the time that they they got into the Premier League. How, how I, I remember seeing you actually at the playoffs at the Millennium Stadium when when we beat Sheffield, and I looked and I just thought, oh, you should. I wish you could just play a, a game, you know, in in the Premier League. Uh, how did you feel about it then? Yeah, the, 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 the certain people around the club done their job. 
you know, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, Graham Turner came, built the club up. Uh, Sir Jack came, he did the yeah. start. Steve Ball came along, he did the football and got them where they are. So I've done my job. You know, it's like me saying to you, take 20 years back, me and you, we'll be laughing at it off because we've been at peak. Well, nearly, you know what I mean? But uh, it's, it's one of them. We all do our job. And the Premier League did elude me. Uh, but I always say to this day, Sue, that uh, I, play for, I played in the World Cup, I played for England. And there's a lot of people in the Premiership haven't played for the country. So I always say I've done something that a lot of people haven't done in the Premier League. But I think if I did have played in, the, if I had have played in the Premier League, I think I would have been okay. I think I'd have been okay. I'd have been like the share the type, you know what I mean, that, that scores goals anywhere and does whatever. So, but uh, now it eluded me. Uh, it isn't a big thing in my mind where people say, uh, if you why didn't you go? Why didn't you go to a Premier League club? I didn't need to go. I was happy where I was, and I'm still happy there now. Well, that's a good answer. And the, the biggest share of fun in the world behind the cameras nodding. He's doing his, he, he always sings World in Motion when he gets excited, which is obviously ironic because it's from Italia 1990. Let's, let's talk about that then. Where were you when you got the phone call? Presumably it was from Bobby Robson. Uh, no, it wasn't. It's from Graham Turner uh, because right. they have to ring the manager first and uh, ring you. And okay. uh, I, I didn't, I didn't know nothing about it. You know, I mean, I think it's, it took me a couple of games before the World Cup to actually get the, the mention to say I've got a chance of playing the World Cup. But I'm a, I was a down-to-earth lad. I still am now. And I didn't think of nothing like that. I didn't think of records. I'm going to play in the World Cup. I was just glad to have a chance to play in an in a, in a England top. Let's go back to the start of, of 1990, literally to the first day, New Year's Day, because the Geordie Lodge has got a bone to pick with you. Uh, yes, Bully. Can I take you back to the 1st of Jan, 1990, St. James's Park? Do you care to um, discuss or do you want to apologise or what, what do you want to say? What's he say, Suze? I can't understand it. Really. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about, buddy. <laughs> it was a whitewash, wasn't it? Do you know that match? Um, I was looking back at some news footage the other day because I'd actually forgotten about this. I don't know why, because my best friend was on one of the planes, but they chartered six planes, didn't they, to fly the fans up. I think it was £73 a ticket to go up to Newcastle. And the fans are so just desperate to... You know, the away fans, aren't they? Just amazing, aren't they, the Wolves fans? And they were all up there. And you went, you'd had a bit of a dry spell, I think, if I remember rightly. And then you just... You just turned up, didn't you, and scored four goals. And I, oh, Georgie Lodge, what was the uh, what was the headline in the local paper the next day? Uh, Newcastle won bully four. There we go. Good day for you, Mr. Ball. Stop it. Stop it, Steve. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> um, what can I say? Uh, you know, it was, it was a cracking day. I mean, uh, I didn't know too much about it, uh, which I'll tell you now, uh, because uh, we went up on the day before, New Year's Eve, on Hills coaches uh, from Aldersley down the road here. And like you say, you got 3,000 fans going on Monarch Airlines. And I don't know where the money was in them days, do you? I don't know who got the money then. But uh, we travelled up there. It took us about seven hours uh, because they had to take the tachograph out and have a two hours rest and put it back in and, and get up there. So we got up there and uh, we did a bit of a training session. And uh, the gap says, oh, you're looking bright, you're looking sharp. Go and get yourself up, get your tracks on, come down, have some nice tea and get yourself to bed. And he says, OK, no worries. So we come down, all nice tracksuits on with walls, heads on, everything, all over the place. And uh, it's like going into an hotel, going, oh, the team's over there. Look, the team's there. Um, so we had our pasta, our beans, our potatoes, all our carbs ready for the ne next day. And uh, we're sitting there after this playing cards. And the gaffer comes out, he goes, right, lads, I want you in bed by five past 12. Ring the wife or the girlfriend or the mistress or whoever it is. To say, happy new year, I want you in bed by five past 12. I went, okay, then Gaffer knows, what do we do now? So uh, the Gaffer walked away 20 yards and uh, with his big bushy eyebrows, he looked like this and went, uh, by the way, you can have a couple of halves. So we said, what do you mean a couple of halves? And we thought, well, what's a couple of halves? So I'm on the phone at, uh, at uh, 12 o'clock, uh, uh, ringing, ringing the wife. I'm going, all right, sweetheart, happy new year. I love you, I do. He goes, have you had a drink? I went, um, <clears throat> no, no, no. He says, you better get to bed then. You've got a big game tomorrow. So we put the phone down. We're in this, in this hallway in this hotel with these phones. Remember the booth phones with the half moon shapes? I'll wait for the phone. Yeah. Me, me Tomo, Cookie. <laughs> We're all in a row like this. We're all in a row like this. And uh, uh, we put the phone down. I looked at Tomo. Tomo's next to me. I'm looking down. I think he's really small. 
Alright, come on. Shall we go clubbing? I'm saying this the night before the game. I'm going, it's, it's someone's going, no, you can't, you can't, we're coming. Because we've had like about 14 halves and a bottle of wine. Seriously, this is no word of a lie. This is the before because it was New Year's Eve. And uh, Tom, come on, let's go clubbing. Let's go clubbing. No, no. So he pulled me trail like this. Come on, let's go to bed. Not like that. We just went to bed. He had the bottom bunk. I had the top bunk. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to bed with another bottle of wine. Finished the wine after about two o'clock in the morning. Got up next morning, eyes red. or oh, smelling of the wine and beer. We think, what have we done? The gaffer gets us up. Walked around the hotel. There was like five sheep on our own, just walking on our own. Get a bit of fresh air. The gaffer named his side, and we went, oh, he's in the side anyway, so we've done it. It was only one time we did it. So we thought, we'll get out there. Walked outside of this tunnel at, 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 at St. James's Park. It was uh, the old St. James's Park. It was beautiful. Walked out, and we looked out, and thought, 3,000 Wolves fans dressed as Santas, reindeers, snowmen, everything that come in all great humour. I thought, and we, had, we got last night and thinking oh man what we've done what we've done you know me thought let's just get on with it let's just get on with it so we went in the gaffer said all his set pieces went out freezing cold day a bit of snow here and there uh we was against their fans in the first half mark kendall saved a penalty in the first half mark kendall god forbid great great goalkeeper and uh, that scottish man who used to manage just mr sitter what's his name mark mcgee <laughs> <laughs> your favorite yeah Everyone's favourite. <clears throat> Sorry, Mark. Sorry, Mark. Uh, because they, they had a good uh, good force and they had Mickey Quinn and Mark McGee up front. And we had uh, Steve and Andy Mucho up front. So it was a battle against the front men. And uh, we went in at 0-0 at, nil -nil at half-time. And I thought, if uh, if we get a draw out this game, I'm going to get paid every Friday. <laughs> but we didn't. We went out second half towards our fans. It was unbelievable. Absolutely. I couldn't get me out. So within 20 minutes, bang, 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 bang. I scored four goals. Sorry, Jordy Lodge, I do apologise. No, it's all right. I'm just going to cut you off now. <laughs> <Hang again>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I scored four goals and uh, we looked at each other, James and Afton, and thought, how the hell did we do that? We won, I think we won the game 4 1. I think it was, was it, Jordy, was it Kevin Brock or somebody like that scored? I think it was, yeah. I think yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we had to give you a consolation uh, goal because it was New Year's Day, you know what I mean? <laughs> you scored the first goal in the 90s at St. James's Park. Did I? Yeah. Oh, I can't remember that one. I'll have to look that one up. Oh, yeah, I did, or you did. Did I? Yeah. Well, New Year's Day, wasn't it? Yeah, you did. 1990. So, <laughs> what, a year, what a year that was um, for you. I mean, it, extraordinary. What a year it was for, for England, really, and uh, so memorable of all, of all World Cups. But... There you were then, uh, getting, getting the call up to England. A player from the third division at the time when you got the call up. What, what was it like when you went to train with the team? Were you welcomed? Were you, were you frowned upon because you were in the lower leagues? What, how, how, how was it? It was strange, to be fair. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I was like, I'm one of these that keeps, keeps in my shell, keeps myself to myself and gets on with it. Uh, but uh, when I went there, you know, you got like Robson, Gasco, Lydica, Beers, Shilt, and all them, the old school, if you know what I mean, they took me under the wing and said, listen, uh, all you got to do, buddy, is do what you do for your club. Don't change anything, do what you do for your club. And that's why the gaffer picked me for England to score goals for England, and that's all it was. And when I got there, uh, like I said before, and Ron Sloan says, I haven't got a first touch. So it improved my first touch playing with better players, you know what I mean? So, yeah. All I played with them, the better I've got. And I was blending in, and as you say, I was like a duck to water. And uh, when I was there, I thinking, I can play with these. These are good players. I, I had to believe in myself to do it. And uh, when I went there, it was just unbelievable, unbelievable. No disrespect to the players I played with at Wolves, but these are world-quality players, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it was unprecedented, really, wasn't it? And um, I don't know whether it opened up other managers to, to look further down the leagues and stuff in the future. It was a kind of Royal the Rover story for you. I mean, that's why a lot of people who hadn't maybe been watching you at Wolves, you know, fell in love with you because you came up with this crew cut, the skinhead, and, and you just, you know, went, went for goal every time. And first, first match scored, Hampton Park. How, how, uh, how good was that? And I know there were loads of Wolves fans there, weren't there? That was unbelievable, to be fair. Uh, it, it, it was absolutely scary because I was in the under 21s in Poland or Albania somewhere with Dave Sexton. He used to be manager to uh, number two to Ferguson, Alex Ferguson. He was the manager and uh, I did a couple of sessions with him and uh, there was a knock on my door 
And uh, Dave Sexton says, oh, the gaffer wants you down there, Scotland. Somebody's had a, got a bit of flu. I went, OK, okay. he knows, when do you want me to go? in? now. I went to 8 o'clock at night. He went, he wants you there in the morning. So I was in a car, in a plane, in a car, boom. Going to the hotel, I thought, I thought Santa Claus had been because there was tracksuits, trainers, golf clubs. There was absolutely everything there. I thought, I'm going to bang them on eBay tomorrow. That's it. <laughs> Because we hadn't gotten much money then, you know, we think, oh, I'm going to have these, I'm going to unlock these. But uh, I got in there, I was up training uh, the next day. I got two days training with them. I thought, yeah, boom, 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 boom. I had two good okay. sessions with them. And uh, as the game came along, um, uh, there was Saints and Greavesy. Remember Saints and Greavesy on television? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they got um, T-shirts on uh, because they, they heard I'd come from the under-21s. And that's let the bull loose, the bully's going to get you. I thought, oh man, I've, 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 put this, I've done this for me. I thought, okay, no, it was at all. The day with the game was the day after. So everybody knew about it. All the Wolves fans knew I've travelled up there. They all knew and everything like And uh, I think, oh man, this is, this is class. This is absolutely class. I'm doing it. Oh, I've got to live with this. So we did the training session of the day itself. Of the, of the day itself, did little set pieces. We sat by the side saying, if he comes off, you go there. If he plays there, you play there. Did all his tactical stuff and whatever. Okay, got back on the couch, went to come back to the hotel. On the way to the hotel, and uh, Bobby Robson gets up on the couch, and I'll get my head down like this. I'm thinking, oh, the gaffer's going to have a go. He walks past me down the hall on the couch. I'm thinking, he ain't going to talk to me. And uh, 10 minutes later, he went, move over. I went, oh, oh man, I was panicking. I thought, uh, so this is uh, you on the bench today. I went, oh, okay, okay. He says, uh, you got anything to say? I went, nah. And uh, he, he got up and walked off and went, get in there. I'm always getting there. Like, with Two seconds later, I'll go, Mom, Mom, yeah. Put 50 pence in the back of the telly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm on the BBC2 Rouse Cup. Yeah, tell Dad as well. Okay, all right, son, okay, try. Bang, put the phone down, right? No word of a lie, honestly. And uh, get back to the hotel, suited, booted, the rest. Start going to Hamden Park. You get to Hamden Park, it's about 100 yards before the reception and where you meet their fans, and everything hit that bus. I mean, tomatoes, eggs, bricks, the lot. It's like somebody with a gun going, do, 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 do. <laughs> The couch was absolutely soaked, seriously. The driver opened the door, he wiped all the door, because it was all soaking, everything was dripping around. We're going to the change rooms, and uh, we all sat down. And the last person in was Terry Butcher. Terry Butcher came running in past everybody, you hear this massive smash in the toilet. He ah. comes to the toilet seat, right? Smashed it in between everybody. He said, we've got to kill these jock. <laughs> like this, I went, oh my word, oh my word, this is scary. This is, I've been in some derbies like Albion and Wolves and whatever, that's scary, but this is really scary. So I thought, okay, the, the gaffer went through his set pieces. We went out the tunnel. He says, go look at the pitch. We went out, I went, oh my word, 86,000 people. There was 80,000 jocks, 6,000 England, and I'm going, oh my word, I look close, I go, jeez, there's 3,000 Wolves fans there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they'd come to see me, I thought they'd come to see me, I thought the boys, I was like Peter Kay, I'm going, yay, I'm not the boys that come to see me, I, I weren't bothered, I thought I'm on the bench, I ain't going to get a chance. So I'm there, I'll go back in the, in the, in the tunnel, get our kit on, our, everything on and stuff like this, and uh, the boys go a massive roar, massive roar, massive chain, everything I'm like a walking here with oh bully bully, oh bully bully. I'm going, I'm like this, I'm going, yeah, okay, no worries. I sit in the dugout in the in the in the dugout like this and uh, the game's going on, it's really brutal, there's tackles, elbows, head butting, everything going on since a derby. And um I'm sitting there and uh, and uh, John Fashion who goes down with something, I don't know he's got a a, a, a blue something or a sprained ankle, and the gaffer says, Go and great and get on. And I thought, Okay, no, it's at all. So I, I'm going to get up like this, and uh, somebody runs across me, and I'm standing there doing my stretches, my groins, my things, and the England fans are there, and I'm just going like this, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I ain't going to go on, am I? I ain't going to go on. I'm like the second, third striker. And uh, Fashion Who gets up, and um, uh, the gaffer goes, Oh, so we get back in the pit, sit down, and think, Okay, it's going to be physical. This is, and uh, Fashion Who goes down again, he goes, Get out there, what is going on? And uh, I went, well, oh, okay, okay. Stretching away like this, and uh, the gaffer goes, whoa, like this. And uh, well, I, I'm, I'm going, me, I'm too busy, like saying to the wall stands, I'm going, yeah, 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 like this. I'm going, me, yeah. So I'll go down there tonight. And he goes, listen, you're going on for fashion, I went, 
okay, no, is it all okay? And I was all, I'll get me top one done, the movie, it's all stuff and whatever. Fresh, you know, comes towards me and uh, I put my hand out to shake it and uh, he smacks it and he goes, all the best, babe. I went, what? <laughs> I grabbed his hand, I squeezed it, then I was like, get in there now. So I went out there, I got 12 minutes. I got 12 minutes at the first half and I thought, I'm going to give this a good go. They got McLeish, McPherson and Jim Layton in goal. And, uh, and uh, the first half, I got 12 minutes and Gaz is on there. And would he pass the ball to me in that first 12 minutes? No, he wouldn't pass the ball to me at all. I thought three times he could have passed the ball to me. I could have had a tap in, I could have had a dead eye. It was like Lineker, Beasley, Gascoigne and Waddle. It was like a, a click. So he couldn't separate them, you know what I mean? Mm. And I was one of these outsiders that come in. And uh, the 12 minutes went. I sat in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the changing room. The gaffer gave his instructions saying, we're doing well, you're doing this, you're doing that. And Gazza went for a week. I thought, I'm going to have a word with him. I'm going to have a word with Paul Gascoigne. I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to have a word with him. Waited 30 seconds. I started walking towards the toilet. He's coming out towards me. And I get him by the elbow. When I squeeze him, I squeeze him. I'm going, Gazza, pass me the ball. He goes, this is the word, Geordie. He goes, ho oh, man. Ho oh, I oh, will, man. I oh, will. Sorry, Geordie. Sorry, sorry. That's a word. <laughs> good, good try. <laughs> so, by the arm, and I'm going past him. He goes, "Oh, where bully man? I will, I will, man." I went, "You better." So uh, I'm on the I'm on the field, second half, and uh, three more times he could have had a chance to pass the ball to me. And I'm going, "This ain't happening." I'm frustrated. I, I just want some service. That's all. The goal came about. Trevor, Stephen, Gary, Stephen on the right hand side. They're coming this way. I run towards the ball and back into the defender, McPherson. The ball comes over. It hits me on the shoulder. It's a great first touch. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I rang on Saunders up the next day and said, this is our first touch. And, uh, <laughs> and the ball just landed. And I thought, just hit it, hit it. And I'd have gone bang. And all I could see was a microphone shoot from the corner of the net. I went, Jesus Christ, I've scored. And I started running and I was going towards the jocks. I went, what are you doing, you muppet? So I just turned there and I got on my knees. I put my hands in the air like this. And have a guess who come first? Gaz, I went, you can straight on. But <laughs> <laughs> you don't pass the ball to me. That's it. You know what I mean. But uh, if you if you watch the caption or the goal on uh, YouTube, uh, you'll see that I could I could I was nearly crying when Wadler puts his um puts his arm around me like this and does it. I could have cried. But I ran my mum. I ran my mum after the game. Unbelievable. Serious. It, this is stupid. This is. I ran my mum. I went, um, mum, did you watch the game? I went, oh, Asti, it was a cracking game. What is? Oh, it was a good goal. What is? Asti, oh, yes, yeah, I said. Did the dad see it? He says, oh, yeah, he's finished his dominoes and his darts at the pub. He's come back, uh, you know, and he's, but he ain't very happy. I went, why are you happy? He went, well, I was watching it in front of the telly, he says, and uh, I got a bowl on my lap. I was scraping these jersey mids, uh, these potatoes for dinner, he says, and uh, when you scored, I jumped up, he says, and t these taters went everywhere. He says, uh, your father I had no tea. <laughs> <laughs> I went... Is that all he's known about? I've just scored against Scotland. He ain't no tea. <laughs> I know, silly. I know. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. And um, after then, then after after that get match in in Scotland, do you think that's what kind of cemented your relationship with Gaza? Because you, you you know obviously went on to be great friends. And how was it when you were in Italy together? Have you got any? Because uh, I mean, there's so many stories about him not being able to sleep and playing tennis in the middle of the night and all sorts of things. It, it, I mean, what a character. How did you get on with him in Italy? He is a good lad, to be fair. You know I mean, but before, before we went to the World Cup, we didn't know, me and Gaza didn't know who was going to the World Cup. Uh, and I couldn't understand that, to be fair, because Gaza was flying. Um, I knew, I thought, if I go, I'm very lucky to be there. You know, I mean, I've, I've, I've done my bit. But Gaza, I thought, he was cemented to go there, but he wasn't. And uh, when we played the Czechs, uh, Czech Republic, uh, six yeah. weeks before... That was the game where we, we clicked together. You know what I mean? You saw the goals, the two class passes, two class goals. Yeah. That more or less. And there's a picture going about, I think, with Gaza with his arm there, me kissing me on the cheek after that yes. game. And he, yeah. whispered to me, he whispered into my ear, I think we're there now, mate. And that's all he said to me. And I thought, well, I don't know. I don't take things for, for granted. And uh, after that, as you say, I got the call, got to the, went to the World Cup. I'm thinking, me, on the stairs, on this big plane, with Lineker, Beasley, Gasco, all these players here, and you got Bully from Tipton on the stairs, <laughs> on the plane. I'm going, yes, get him there. But 
He was a great character. He's absolutely top draw. You, 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 you probably met him, Susan. Jordy's probably met him. He's a great lad. He's an honest lad. He's just had the wrong people around him. And uh, he's top draw. And uh, we've got something coming up uh, soon with him at the Grand Theatre. Uh, he's supposed to be in the 1990 reunion, 30 years on. Yeah. We've had to postpone it because of this, this stupid, bloody demic, whatever he's called or whatever he's told about. But uh, it's, it's, it's one of the things. But we've got that coming up soon. So, Jordy, you have to come down and uh, watch that when you, when, you, when you get a chance, when you can put it back. Oh, definitely. Well, I'd love to do that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have to tell you, he is actually wearing a wolf's hat at the moment. I will be taking a picture of that oh. later. Uh, yeah, so that it was actually, I think it was the 30th anniversary, wasn't it, of that game, um, that Czech game last last Saturday. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's extraordinary to think, because it just, talking about it now, it just seems like it's yesterday, but it's, it's obviously it's 30 years ago. Um, I just, I'm going to ask you some fan questions, because I'm, I'm sort of aware that, you know, I've, I've kind of... Um, a bit dominated this in terms of chat, although I've hardly got a word in edgeways to be fair. Um, you're better than you used to be, aren't you? When you used to just give one word answers, um, <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Um, Carl Whitehouse, this is a, a, a actually a uh, oh, your favorite hat trick, Carl Whitehouse wants to know. Favorite hat trick, oh my word, I can't say that one up, uh, up north, can I? Against Newcastle, because Jordy's there, um... say it, say it, say it, say it. No, no, I think it's got to be the Grimsby one. The Grimsby. Grimsby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's my best one. The horrible shirt we used to wear, that big Wolves head one, the green one, and the horrible, horrible shirt. I scored it in that one, but uh, it, I think it was the first game, was it the first game of the season down there, place? I think it was. I can't, I can't, it's been some dodgy, there's been some dodgy kit over the years, actually, hasn't there? Um, yeah. All right, we'll go with that one. Stevie on it says, um, actually, a lot of people wanted to know this. After, obviously, after the England call-up and um, being being in the spotlight, in the in the global spotlight, what teams came in for you, and uh, why didn't you go? Okay, uh, I know to four teams uh, that came into me. Uh, uh, the the first one was Torino in Italy. Uh, these are what we know to. I know there's probably some more where the gaffer didn't tell us or. I didn't want me to go there. When I, but Torino was the one I could have gone to. And I thought, Italy, I've just come from there. Six weeks up there in Italy, the World Cup. I thought, I like my own English people, English beer. I just want, I don't want to go there. You know, it's one of them. The second one that came in, you wouldn't believe, Geordie, was Newcastle. Uh, before, oh. before Andy Cole went to Newcastle. Oh, second, yeah, under Keegan. He was second choice, Andy Cole was. And, uh, and I, I went, I just had my first boy then. And I just thought, Why That's the biggest you... mistake ever, Bully. It's the biggest yeah. mistake in your career. Yeah, for them not to try even harder to get me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to see you with Shearer. That's what he wanted, doesn't it? <laughs> but that was the second club. The third club was uh, Coventry with Big Ron, as you know, too. And all in the papers and whatever. And I was coming towards the end of my career. Then I thought, now nah, why leave? And the fourth one was Celtic. I could have gone to Celtic at the end. But I thought it's too wet up there for me. So you, so essentially, really, you were just you were too happy and settled where you were, and you you loved your club. Is that is it as simple as that? Yeah, it is. You know, what I mean, you're not going to get many uh, one man clubs these days now because uh, a lot of people just go for the money or the or the fame or what they want to do, or whatever. I was up where I was. I thought I could get the walls a bit further. It was only because of lack of money going, coming into the club that we couldn't go even further than what we could. But now I love it. I love it there. I love it. I still love it now. I still love the people. Uh, the club itself, it's, it's just it's like Geordie with the Geordies. They're exactly the same as us. Mm. Uh, hard-working people. Uh, they put the money where the mouth is. They go and watch the game. Week and whether it's rubbish or good or bad or sad, they still keep going. And that's what Wolves fans are like. Yeah. And, and that, like I said, no one can understand what we're saying. So, you know, we're like sort of... Peas in a pod. Peas, peas in a pod, yeah. <laughs> um, if you could play in the Wolves' current team or your 87 to 89 squad, which would you choose? Oh, my word. I think, I think uh, with spirit-wise, uh, I'd rather be with the 87 and 88 side because we had a great spirit, great team, camaraderie, whatever. But with the side these days, I'd love to play in the side there these days because I wouldn't have to chase back and get the ball myself or good luck, good luck all that way. And that way, it would be put on a play for me, especially with all them, the, the way they play at the moment. I'd be like him in his, I mean, he's, a, he's a workhorse, he's a great player, he's an absolutely brilliant player. Uh, when he first came to the club, I didn't think he was the, the out-and-out striker because he wouldn't score with his back to goal. And he did last this season, I think it's this season, he turned chest, turned volley, with all, he's a complete striker. So I think uh, the way they play these days, I'd like to play in it, but I, I loved it. I loved it when we played in, in, in the early days. 
what what is it do you think that we need or what what do wolves need to to turn themselves into a regular big six team into the, into the top six what what's the next step do you think I think I think you're looking at uh, players like Eden Hazard and, uh, and Zaha and certain people like that. You need a, a different quality of player that's actually done it. If you know what I mean, around 28, 29, certain players who can keep the young kids level-headed and push us that bit further when the when the when the risks are so high. Mm. And when you look at the squad, I mean, there's we've got a, a bunch of very charismatic players. Actually, I think a lot of people. The Art Wolves fans talk a lot about Adama uh, Traore. How how far do you think that he can go? He's changed so much in in the last season, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought when he first came to the club, I thought uh, he can catch pigeons. He can. He's fast as you know. What I mean, he's one of these players, but he hadn't got the but he hadn't got the end product. He didn't know what to do with the ball. He'd still be up, the, up row Z in the stand without the ball. He'd just keep running without the ball. Now I think Nuno or somebody has pulled him to one side and said, "Listen." Split second, you've took these players on, split second, stack, stay calm, deliver the ball. And I think they've, uh, they've monitored him and they've tutored him in, and, uh, into a, a very, very good player. He still has the odd days where he don't turn up and every player does that. But he can, I think he can, he can go far. I think uh, whether, whether Wolves keep him, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen when the season starts, whether somebody fancies him to say he can do a job for there for Liverpool, Tottenham, Arsenal... But it's like Jimenez and the players at the club at the moment. Why do they need to go? Why do they need to leave Wolves? Because we are going to win something. We are going to do it. Whether it's this year, next year, or in two years' time, we mm. are going to win something because you can see the, the structure now from 86 when I was there to now it's come on absolutely miles and bundles. And how important for you is the connection, uh, the respect that's obvious between the players and Nuno, or as I always have to say, Nuno Espirito Santo. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, I think, I think it's all down to a good manager. I, I've said it before with Graham Turner and certain people. Uh, if you can get all these players together and uh, united, you will go a long, long way. And Nuno, you know, there's talk about Nuno going to certain clubs. Why? It's the same as the players. We are going to win something. We have got the structure. We've got the, the, the fan base. We're going to have the ground soon when it's all done up. Whatever, which it, it's all good at the moment as it is. So why do they need to go? And I think the way they are at the moment, it's all down to Nuno. Mm. <clears throat> and what about the situation that we're in now with this COVID-19, with this pandemic virus? And obviously, yesterday we heard that uh, Holland have, have null and void the season. Uh, they're not having any sporting or group gatherings uh, until September. Um, as a player, how do you how do you think that this weird scenario is affecting them? And um, as a player, if, 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 when you were playing, if you'd had to stop like this towards the end of the season, how would you be? Do you think you'd be going stir crazy? Or uh, well, I I'd probably need to go and borrow some more walls because I've climbed all these already. Um, what can I say? You know, I mean, it's one of them. As a player, you've got to be uh, mentally motivated. You know, I think uh, we, we, we did well when we played because when we finished the end of the season, we had eight weeks off. Uh, and that's to do on holiday, to drink and eat, whatever. And we did that for eight weeks. And we was coming back a stone heavier and then running our legs off to get fit. These days now, they are mentally and physically prepared. So they should be up here, uh, focused, single-minded, say, listen, uh, we're going to get this date soon. When we get this date, we're going to be ready. And that's the only thing I think, uh, as a player, you'd be worried about not having that date in your head because mm. then you get in your head, say, oh, I might have the odd beer, I might have the odd big curry, I might have this. Uh, the players need that date, and I hope that date comes soon because they've got to, I think they've got to finish the season. I do think they've got to finish it because the Liverpool, the Man U's and the Man City are saying Liverpool ain't going to win it. It's going to be void. Uh, Villa ain't going to go down because it's going to be void. You know, I, mean? I think it's got to be finished. Whether how long it takes towards the year, you can always put the season back a bit further. So uh, I hope it does be finished and I hope they get the date soon. Yeah, because literally they can't see the goalpost. I mean, uh, you know, quite literally. Georgie Lodge is coming in with a question, I think. Yes, can, at the start of the interview, you panned the camera on and everybody's asking what shirt was on your wall. Oh, what shirt was on your wall? We're all moving, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. So, Hold on. I'm not techno. I'm not techno. I've got me, um, I got me uh, caps on the wall there. Wow. 
And uh, that's that one there, look. That's me, uh, England shirt from the World Cup. Uh, oh, sorry, 1990. Nice. Yeah, Gaz is in the middle. You got him? Yeah. Fant oh, brilliant. So that, that's on me wall in the hall. That's all, that's all I've got at the moment, so. Yeah. Right, Steve, have you got a ball there? A ball? Yeah. This is for me, keep you up, please. <laughs> do, 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 uh, do, if you do 10 keepy uppies, we'll donate a tenner each, me and the Geordie, to the NHS. Yeah, look, yeah, yeah, that's it. 10 keepy uppies. It's going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! That's, that's... <laughs> 30 quid. <laughs> okay, we'll do it. <laughs> you daft bugger. <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, another question from the Geordie Lodge. Bully, out of all the Geordies you've played with, who's the best? Uh, the Geordies? Yeah. Of myself. Um, Suze, can I have a look at him, by the way? Because he's no. got a face to a, a, to a talking. No. Do a face, you can't, you face time after. You can't see him. Um, we'll face time after. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll face time after. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, what can I say? The best Geordie, as a player or as a person? Uh, both. If you don't mind. Uh, what can I say? Uh, who? Who? As a Geordie. The best player. The best Geordie player that you played with. Oh, best Geordie player. Yeah. Oh, my word. Oh, who is it? Croy uh, Key. Take your pick. Who's yours? Oh, I'm the same as you. Beardsley, Shearer, Gascoigne. All up there. Hey, yeah. right, Gascoigne. They are. They are, to be fair. What uh, there's, there's loads of them who you can put in the same category. I would stick with what you've got there. I'll stick with Gaza, uh, to be fair. You know what I mean? He's, he's an absolute hero up there. He's absolutely top drawing. He's a great bloke, great player. Yeah, same as he. Brilliant. No uh, who's, the, who's the worst defender you've played against? Worst defender? Um, I didn't put it down to worst defenders. I put it down to me having a bad day. <laughs> 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 uh, there, there weren't really many, many that worst defenders. There, were, there weren't no... Uh, there were some hard ones. Yeah, I mean, it went right through me all the time. Certain players, like Steve Walsh, Jerry Taggart, certain players like that went through me. They had a job to do, uh, not to harm me, to, to get the man on the ball, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, the best player, the, you won't believe the best defender I played against, you won't believe, was Des Walker. Oh, yeah. Des Walker, he was like a gazelle. He was like, he was uh, six foot. He was really thin. I could turn him, and I thought, I'm going to get me shot in here, and then he'd take the ball off me. He was really quick, and it was hard to get past Des Walker. Okay, uh, Dickie Willett would like to know the best stadium that you've played in in terms of atmosphere. Oh, best stadium! Oh man, uh, it's I think there's two the old days, the old Man City grounds, uh, where it had all, the old uh, stadium where it's all in, in, in everybody's close together, and the old Everton ground where they had the three tiers, the three tiers on the one stand. That the, all like the old fashioned grounds, see the old the old traditional grounds. They've all changed now because they're all modern. They're all miles away and. Uh, you know, they're unbelievable stadiums, but I'd rather stick with the, the old grounds, like the old uh, Wembley, the old Wembley, rather than the new Wembley. You know what I mean? Like grounds like that. So, Man City and Everton. OK. Ches Lincoln said, how did you feel about being left out of the starting line of the 1998 FA uh, Semi-Cup final when McGee went for Claridge up front, just uh, left you and, and uh, uh, Keane on the bench? Why do you have to keep bringing uh, that stuff? <laughs> I'm not. I didn't bring it up. I'm just, I'm just reading out the questions. <laughs> he won't uh, quit. Well, there was, uh, I think he, he, he preferred to play uh, Goodman, Slater and Claridge rather than uh, Bull and Keane uh, up front. I don't know where he got that from, dear. I don't know what happened there. But uh, I was gutted, but I'd just come back from um, from uh, injury. Uh, but he wouldn't have me on the bus if I wasn't uh, fit enough to play. So I don't know why, whether he was making a statement or what he was doing or whatever. But uh, if I was just coming back from injury and I was on the, I was on the bus to play... Why didn't he play me for the first 50 or 60 minutes, the best 60 I could give, and then fetch me off and then put somebody else on? Because when you got Tony Adams and Steve Bold at the back of Arsenal, we'd have run and ragged. Me and Keeney would have run and ragged. No disrespect to Don and, uh, and, and Claridge and whatever. Me and Keeney was like a breath of fresh air. We would have just attacked him. But uh, I was disappointed. But, you know, I mean, it was, uh, it was easy, the mistake he made. Uh, yeah, well... For, for, but that's the thing about football. We think that unites us is the injustice 
me and the Geordie lads believe it's the injustice because we've all got something to bark about when you when you go to a football game and it it unites everybody doesn't it along with the passion for the game itself um you've got an MBE you met the Queen what was that like uh that was unbelievable to be fair you know I mean it's it, I mean I, I, I don't know why they give whether they give me to do uh, uh charitable work and services to football and um it was it was unbelievable to be fair it was absolutely scary to meet a a small lady, like it's absolutely scary because you you don't know who you're going to meet on the day, and uh, it's the palace is absolutely huge. It's absolutely massive, and um, uh, you're in this big room, and you got the MBEs, OBEs, CBEs in this room, and you got this um, this man comes out with this uh, this uh, microphone, and you got televisions all the way around, so you can see what's going on. And he goes, uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you're meeting the Queen today. I went, ooh. He was like, this went, okay. <clears throat> he says, whatever you do, you do not speak to the Queen until she speaks to you. Because I'm in this room with 3,000 people, right? And I was, I was going to go up to the Queen and go, do you get fed up with this? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> but I couldn't. He says, uh, he says uh, you'd be called out by alphabet good order, AA, AB, AC, always be you. So I was like 2,997 out of these 3,000. 3, I'm sweating. I've got this hat on above me ears here. I've got this big thing on tie. And I go, Stephen George Bull. I go, okay. So I walk out 20 yards, bowed like this, walk forward, shook her hand like this, step back. She said, hello, Steve. How are you? And whatever. And uh, you play football. Yes, you, you score goals and stuff like whatever. I went, yeah, 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 yeah. This it lasted about 18 seconds. And she put a medal. I went, uh, Oh, good luck and uh, keep doing the good work, okay? And I, as I got to turn around to go away, she starts sniggering, right? And I went, um, I went, uh, 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 what are you laughing at? And she, she looked at me, uh, she, you know what she said to me, Suze? She said to me, she says, um, I just can't believe you actually played for the Albion. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, I think, I think uh, your grace is on here saying hello. To, um, to me and to you, because she calls me Snoozy, right? I don't know whether to call you Suzanne, Susie, Snoozy. <laughs> it's good, yeah. It's, I think Gracie calls me Snoozy anyway. She's uh, she's saying hello to you. She's saying hello to her dad. Okay. Um, Frank Warwick wants to know if the Geordie Lodger is actually Alan Shearer. Uh, yes, I am. He makes quite a good cup of tea. Um, I don't know if you asked that one or not. Oh, yeah. I've seen that, actually. I, I will ask you this. I've never asked you this. Did you really punch Gary Lineker? Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> All I did was take his crisps off him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I, did, I, I know you, you're all disappointed, but uh, he's all right. He's a good bloke, and he's a great footballer, yeah. a great guy. But, uh, with, there was just this uh, rumour... Uh, when we went to the World Cup, that he, he he ended up with a black eye, and I said, "Bully, give it him," because uh, he was taking the Mickey out of the way. Bully spoke, and uh, there was no rumour, no truth in that at all, no at all. He's a good bloke, great goal scorer, but he's a top bloke. Yeah, he he, he certainly is. And uh, we were talking then about obviously you getting an MBA. I'm just going to do a time check, Geordie Lodge. How long have we got left? Uh, time there, yep, actually, for two or three minutes. Okay, just very quickly then, just because it's remiss to not discuss this. Um, you, you know, you are still, are you still, are you an ambassador of the club or a director of Waltz or what's your role there now? Yeah, I'm a vice president, vice president, uh, ambassador. Uh, so right. So whatever you need me to do, I'll do whatever. Yeah, so you, obviously you're always there, you're always doing stuff for the club, but more than that, you do so much work for, um, for the charities in Birmingham, Wolverhampton, in the Midlands, really, with your foundation and with Promise Dreams. And um, it's, it's, it seems endless, actually. You, you, you guys are at, are at it all the time. But from a selfish point of view, it must, it must bring something back to you to see the joy that you bring to people. Oh, I absolutely love it, Suze. And uh, you know you do it yourself. You know what I mean? You, you give back what you can give, uh, whether it's a smile, a handshake, a photograph, whatever. We do what we can because we're lucky people. Like, you're lucky, we're lucky. We, we can still keep doing it. And uh, if me being Steve Bull and you, Suze, probably get to... 10 or 20 quid off people to do it. I'll do it all day long. And uh, we've been doing it now, like you say, with the uh, Promise Dreams, with the Steeble Foundation. Local charities all around the Black Country and West Midlands, we try to help because on your doorstep, there's, there's a lot of charities on your doorstep that go missing out. You know what I mean? So I'll try to do it on my doorstep. But uh, we've been doing a lot lately for the NHS, for mm. New Cross, Russell's or Warsaw Manor. We've been trying to get, uh, you know I mean, gloves, 
uh, you mean water, uh, energy bars, masks. We've been trying to get what we can, but what baffles me is why should we try and get them, so Why should we try and get them? Why can't the NHS get them? With all this money they raise at the moment, why can't they get them themselves? It baffles me. It baffles me. Well, keep doing what you're doing because it is a really tough time, isn't it, for, for charities right now? And, um, you know, all, all charities across the board are, are really struggling because obviously everybody is at the forefront of everybody's mind is the NHS and making sure they've got what they need so they don't get sick because we don't want them to be sick and, uh, you know, trying to help other people. And that seems to be what is happening at the moment. Um, but it's, it's, always a, it's always a pleasure to, to have a chat with you and, and to speak to you and um, keep, keep servicing Wolverhampton because it is Wolverhampton is one of those towns isn't it it's a working man's town and it's really it's all about how the football club is doing and it reflects so much doesn't it on the people in Wolverhampton it does to be fair and you've got to get it right it's a city it's not a town it's a city I know I'm so sorry I always do and I always call the University of Polytechnic because it was when I went there yeah yeah you see, they're good people as you say we're all good people you know, we all are all we've got to do at this moment in time, Suze, is uh, do what the government is saying, you know, stay indoors, have your hours exercise, do what you can. Everybody do what you can if you can do stuff and uh, just be safe and uh, this will all be over, this will all be over right? and, and then we'll get back onto whatever normal life is anyway. Well, Bully, as we say in Wolverhampton, out of darkness cometh light yeah. and I think that's probably a good note to, to say thank you so much for joining Susie's Breakfast Club this morning and to to Gracie for being there and joining in as well, for Kirsty for setting it up, to hear your stories. It's, it's just always a, it's always a riot, always a laugh. 